Um, what are the things that are being emphasized right now in, in, in your job and, and more broadly in corporate learning in Europe? If you look at uh, the average age of American corporations uh, and you compare that to Europe, uh, you'll see uh, differences, uh, differences of a magnitude of, of two to three, which means that institutionally speaking, people work in companies that are 60, 70, 100 years old. That happens in America too, but most of the time they have merged uh, they went for bankruptcy, or they, they, some, they just disappeared. So you need to get that into account because this is the DNA of the company. This is the culture. This is where the values come from. And and in Europe, we have these kind of existing companies that are much more um, experienced in in some ways. And 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 people enter the company with the feeling that they are part of a longer history. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. I also want to talk about touch on organizational development. What are sort of the trends that you're dealing with right now? I think organizational development is really the field that we don't know much about. We know a lot about individual development. Uh, we know quite a bit about leadership development, although it's hard to do. Uh, OD is really about culture of the organization. And when you, you talk to people and try to understand what they mean by culture, you get very vague answers. So it means that OD is actually a field in construction. And what we're trying to do now, in, 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 at least in my company, is trying to define more precisely what are the steps of OD. How do you do OD? How do you measure OD? How do you make sure that given a problem, which is a collective problem, which is do we have the competency collectively to make the organization successful. Given that, we need to address a number of steps to clarify the problem of OD. Uh, whether you need to talk about organizational development, you get a different answer. That is a signal of the progress we have to make in that field. Um, are there specific um, plans that you have in place? It sounds like this big overarching issue that you're trying to tackle and something that's pretty nebulous and, as you said, is hard to actually define right now. So are there specific things in place that you have goals maybe in the next you know, year or two years that will, will be more, um, uh, you'll have a, more, a baseline of things to meet? Yes. I think, I mean, f from my understanding, first of all, we have to gather the profession of people who do organizational development because they all do a bit of it. And we need to sit together and understand what they do in the value chain. What do they do in, in the total overarching goal, which is organization and development. And, and that's the thing that, that I'm trying to do right now with different uh, consulting firms and, and universities and business schools in Europe. Um, the second thing we have to do is, is to get to best practices, to understand what are the best practices that have been experienced in companies. And, and we've, been, we've been happy enough uh, to, to experience uh, several at EDF in the recent time. Uh, what are these best practices? What do they mean in terms of processes? And can we replicate that? I think the main issue of OD is that right now it's more in art, which is in the end of boutiques of consulting firms, but it's not something of a larger knowledge that we can share and that we can replicate. That, I think, is the goal of organizational development right now. Okay. Another thing I wanted to touch upon is I know that you're responsible for, well, EDF has, you know, 12,000 employees worldwide, so responsible for the corporate education in terms of management for that. So do the programs you offer take into account those cultural and geopolitical differences that the employees you're dealing with? They have to. They have to in a sense that if you do individual development and leadership development, you enter the social fabric of the country. So, and as an example, you know, uh, leadership is, is an American word. You know, there's no equivalent in French, uh, nothing equivalent in Italian. Uh, German has an equivalent which has a very different meaning. So you get into a concept that itself is not born in the culture you want to address. And then, of course, this is, the first thing is awareness. What, do we understand the same thing about a leader? You know, China has a different history. There's no hero in, in Chinese mythology. So what would you look at a leader as a hero, like American would, if, if, uh, if uh, you consider the word? So we need to get into that. Uh, and also, of course, the consequence of that is we need to, to get into the how. How do we do that? If things and the concepts are quite different, how do we proceed if we want to achieve the same goal? Uh, 
And, and that is very practical. You know, how do you do feedback in a culture that doesn't like feedback? We know that part of uh, the reason why people develop individually is because they get feedback. They get reward, they get sanctions, and they get understanding of what they do. If the feedback is not part of the culture, uh, they're going to be missing one key dimension. The American do feedback in a very different way from Asian or from European. American are over inflating the feedback. Uh, European are under inflating the feedback. And, and Asian are doing very different things and not always doing the feedback. So this is the kind of things we have to work uh, on all the time because the, the, the devil is in the detail. And that's where the value of learning is critical.